Audible is on. John, for some reason, it's a Friday. Kimbo Camper, John can tell me. I'm sitting you. in for Joe Rose. I feel sitting in for Joe Rose. You know, I feel should like, I be loud? I, I, yeah, I you got to be, you gotta be I, loud, I, and you got to be out there, and you got to, you know, this and that. And you, but your head would have to be Let a lot me. bigger. You'd have to, <laughs> you'd have to puff up your head a little bit. Gonna, <laughs> Let me tell you something, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's a Friday. And I feel like I walked into Knucklehead Central here when oh, I when God, I walked you, in. You, what's going on well, here? Well, first today? of all, Joe came in earlier because Joe being a uh, you know well, he's Joe, a, be, trying Joe to be being a, a player, he's trying a, to be a player, that's right. trying to line up. Sick. He comes in he a little feel sick, very well. and he, uh, hacking and you we were like Joe, get send out him out of here, the door, man. send him out the door, yeah. send him home where he where he should be. And then you go back there and you try to get stuff done. And look, don't don't get me wrong. And I talk about Leon and Jeff and they Logan, their and best Trey, and those forward. guys. They work hard. They do. They always mean the best. Right. But man, say they out. are some knuckleheads Bad. back there. Well, what's thirty seconds before we go on the air? Leon comes running, running, and, and not for nothing. Leon, Leon, Leon got a little trouble running. He would never make it. He would never make it through the combine. No. I think he's got maybe... You know the three-cone drill? I think he's got... He, he got he, yeah. No one would able no. be able to go through the three-cone drill no, after Leon no, went no. through. The, the cones would be up in the Gone. stands and whatnot. Yeah. Maybe one of the worst... Maybe one, maybe one of the worst displays of athleticism that I've ever I seen. I thought our camera was going to go down. <laughs> I thought the lights were going to be destroyed. Running with scissors. Running with scissors. Good, was that, and that was, and he had a scissors in his hand. Don't know what it meant. Don't know what it But it got Friday off to a good start. I know. I think they was told a, us that in second grade. It was a kick Leon off Friday. Yeah. remembered that. <laughs> well, Leon, Leon spent two years in second grade, so he should, <laughs> so he should, be, he should be fully no, aware. Leon was he in the lunchroom for most of that time. He should be fully aware of the fact that you, maybe that's why he stayed in second grade for could, two years, because he kept running around with scissors <laughs> in his hand. <laughs> no, we told you, dumbass. You're not allowed to run around with that's scissors. That's right. They used to call Leon 2-3. Because he spent two years in second grade and three years in third grade. <laughs> That's bad. Uh, we love them, though. Anyway, no, they're the best. Those, those, I, I can't hey, around. did you notice Leon, and, and since we're talking about him, did he have a different sheen on his head today? It was a little bit darker. I don't know if he was dipping, if he was rinsing or well, I think what Leon did, because I think I've seen Leon do this. You, you remember, th this may be for the, the millennials or the younger people. You remember when you used to have to polish your shoe and you used to have to get that little round thing yeah. with the paste? Yeah, you, with the, you, you, you put it on right. your shoe and then you had to. I, I think he uses that to darken his hair. Is that I think what he goes. Was? He doesn't go to. A, he doesn't go to a, a salon to get it done. He just goes get some of that and. He's you know, kind beautiful. Of, he looks good, by the way. I liked his look today. Logan was good. Logan for was him. keeping him in track back. Well, there. Logan's all clean and fresh in there yeah, now. He got well, the Logan's all cut. good. He, look, he trimmed beard. his beard up a little I know. bit, huh? I know. Got the haircut. It's a new year. He and Trey now are battling for the female uh, for the female secular, <laughs> Logan's got secular Trey market so out there. Beat. It's yeah, not I think even Logan funny. took a big step forward on Trey. <laughs> uh, anyway, got some stuff we get to. We'll talk about the Senior Bowl yeah. going on, and and for all intents and purposes, as far as teams are concerned, Senior Bowl's over. Yeah. Uh, the scouts, the coaches, the general managers. Uh, and, and I know from the Dolphins' standpoint, just about everybody in the upper office w was out there for that, uh, watching that. And then they'll bring all that tape back, and they'll kind of dissect the tape. But, John, you've had a chance to watch a, a lot of that stuff. And it's always interesting to see the guys that uh, that, that kind of stand out uh, and, and come in. And there were a couple guys, John, that, that, that really weren't supposed to be on that roster Played well in other All Star games, either was the East Rest Shrine game or the uh, NFL PA All Star yeah, game right. that they had, and earned themselves uh, trips to the to the Senior Bowl. And you're talking about one of, uh, one of the guys that, did, that kind of got the job, got the opportunity, and, is, and certainly made the most of it. I thought one of the best players over the three days uh, that I watched practice was wide receiver uh, Deshaun Hamilton. I, I thought he was terrific. Yeah. I, I thought that. Not only his size and going up and getting the football, but a guy that runs routes and yep. take it away from defenders mm -hmm. and be able to use his body like an NFL wide receiver. Uh, he just handled himself yep. that way. And I, I just felt that, you know, Penn State was a very good team over the last two years. So you got to go back and take a look at the tight end, Gasicki. He's yep. like 6'7". He's yep. a great red zone uh, threat. He runs routes great. He comes in and out of breaks well. And Hamilton, the wideout, uh, you can tell why McSorley, their quarterback, mm -hmm. had such a, a luxury because yep. you've got a guy in a, in a running back that's going to get drafted in the top five picks, yep. I would assume. And now you've got a tight end and you've got a wide out that I think garner a very high consideration in this year's draft. Right. So, you know, two positions that the Dolphins may be looking to, to add players, yep. for sure tight end. Yep. And I think at wide out, 
those are two guys you have to keep on your radar. Yeah. So we'll, we'll kind of get on that a little bit. Uh, obviously, the talk about Jarvis Landry until something's done with Jarvis, that's always going to be a deal. And, and then tomorrow morning, and you still have an opportunity to get involved in this if you'd like to. It's really one of the great events, John, I think, yeah. that, that, that's done yeah, does a great throughout job the Dolphins with Danny and, and, and everybody that gets involved with it. And he's got a he's got such a dedicated crew of people that put this thing together that work with him. So uh, tomorrow it's the 8th Annual Dan Marino Foundation Walkabout Autism and Expo uh, brought to you by Walgreens and Badia Spices are, are, are uh, sponsors of that. But but Danny gets out and it's kind of you go to this at the stadium. and so It's get, early. And, and it's, it's early. early. You get there early. And and, I, you know, usually I'm usually I've done I've done it ever done it every year and I'm usually home by 11 or yeah. 12 o'clock. Right. You know. Because I know I'm usually wheeling in somewhere and grabbing me a little sandwich or something on the way. I, I usually have a tea time right around eleven thirty twelve, 12, so I give Danny the nod. But, it, but it's really a really a nice event, and and he gets. I mean, I'm always amazed when I get there and look at the you get fifteen, twenty thousand people there. I mean, the sea of people, families in yeah. schools, and schools, and and these kids that come out and they're going to walk and they're yep. going to run and they're going to play games and they're going to eat all the food trucks that are yep. out there, and it's just amazing because the pride. That all these families and, and these in these institutions, if you want to call them schools or yep. wherever the kids are are, are coming from, yeah, all, they all have the same color T-shirts yep. and they're all going at the same time. And it's such a great thing that that the Dan Marino Foundation and and the university, you yep. know, Dan Marino University, and they, and they have the schools and, and and from all the way from when you're four, five, six years old, yep. all the way through getting a job yep. for for all of these children that that start with autism, no matter of what your severity is, yeah. your level uh, that you start with, there's a way to yeah. get them to the finish line yeah. and be able to be productive in society and feel good about themselves. It, and they do such a great job. And, you know, Michael Marino, who was, was touched with the autism, and, and that's kind of what got, what certainly was the impetus behind Danny and right. Claire and, and getting involved. And, and I always said, the, the other things, and to me, he's like the guy you can stand up there and say, because... I remember talking to Danny. He says, yeah, you know, he struggled early and this and that. And we found out he had autism. We wanted to do everything we could, not only for him, but other families right. who were dealing with autism. And so so came the hospital. And, and now he's got the school and, and everything going on. But it's funny, for, for Danny's kids, Michael was the first one to graduate college. That's right. You know? That's so, right. so it's kind of, it shows you that, you know, there's hope. There's opportunity, but so it's an opportunity tomorrow to come out and, and help. So the, the other thing that's nice about tomorrow, uh, John, with the stadium rebuild over the last few years, finally get rele- relegated yeah, to the outside the of, the, lot, right. of the parking lot. Well, now that the stadium work is done, uh, a lot of the stuff is going to be inside the stadium. So you get the chance, you get, look, there's a lot of people that, now I understand, you know, the expense to go to an NFL game sometimes is prohibitive for a lot of families. And this is an opportunity for you to come out and help a good cause, but also get a chance to go in the stadium, kind of take look a look around, at it, get right. a feel for it, bring your kids. Because you might want you know, to come back in September exactly, or in August no doubt. for a preseason or, or look, game. Or, or the reality is maybe, look, maybe you never get to come mm-hmm. back in there. Right. Because, because you, look, like I said, it's not, it's not cheap to go to an NFL game. It's not cheap to go to a Canes game at times. And there's some people who just can't afford it. So be able to go down, experience the day, right. see players. There'll be autographs. I know there's, there's usually – we usually have 20 Good guys leads. at a time yeah. or so signing yeah. autographs. Uh, and, and most of the guys, most of the former players come and current players come, sign autographs. So it's a chance to see the players, a chance to get a look at the stadium and do all these things and just do a good thing for our community. So uh, it, it's been it's been going on. I think this is the eighth year that he's done it. it began as an idea to unite uh, the local autism community in 2010, turned into this annual DMF walk about autism and expo. Like I said, annual attendance is close to 15,000 people. They're going to have, you said, food trucks. They're going to have events, it's everything. stuff for They've the kids. Games. They've got everything. everything. The event starts, uh, you can arrive at Hard Start Rock Stadium beginning at 745, goes to kind of closing ceremonies around noontime, and, and you can come and go as you, as you right. please anyway, and there's just so many things to do, and, and uh, like everybody will be there, former players, all the, there'll be media people there, there'll be uh, TV people that'll be there doing, uh, doing their part. It makes you feel so. good about being part of the South Florida it fabric. Does. and community because you can go out and partake and yeah. participate with with all these families and all these children that that are uh, trying to do right yeah you know, they're trying they're trying to better themselves yeah. and be able to to give their children a chance yeah. and, and and things like this brings that whole community yep. whether you have anybody that's been touched with autism or not you feel like you're doing yeah. the right thing when you go and you know you get the chance to 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 see kids that go through those programs and have been part of the program with Dan Marino. Interacting or, with or those Or quite kids, frankly, right. 
uh, other places. You know, I, I look. Danny does so much for autism, and and Claire, they do. They've done so much for autism. But there are a lot of other organizations out there that are doing Absolutely. stuff for autism. So you get to see those people that come, and you get to see you get to see where your support goes when you see these guys becoming productive. These guys and girls becoming productive citizens and, 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 you know, just going through everything and, uh, and they're, and they're proud that they can participate and, and be a part. So it's just, it, it really is one of the special days. Um, you feel better driving out of there than you do driving. Uh, in there. Absolutely. I, I absolutely. think, you know, the first couple and, and of times, I feel good going, I feel no, good I mean, going cause I know, you know something good, but you when know, you leave, you know, you're going yeah. for the right reasons, but when you leave, when you see it and you hear all the people that are involved and all yeah. the, the sponsors that are backing, uh, you know, this event yeah. and you get to hear from them and yeah. the money that's raised and where it's going and what they're doing yeah. with the university, you feel, I feel a heck of a yeah. lot better driving out knowing that that happened. Yeah. And I, and not that I had anything to do with it, but I, just that I was volunteered a part of it, to, yeah. to go no and, and spend my time there. So like I said, if you're looking for something to do tomorrow morning, as you said, you know, by noontime it's done and you're, you're out, go about the rest of your day and do whatever you need to do. Uh, but I, I would highly recommend uh, bring your family, bring everyone down there, whether you're a Dolphin fan or not, whoever you're a fan of or whether you don't care about football or not. And if you if you do, you're probably not listening to this show anyway, <laughs> but I just thought I'd say it. So uh, but anyway, yeah, I think it's a great, great opportunity for everyone. We love it. You know what? He usually gets between 15,000 plus. You know, it'd be nice to get 20,000 people yeah, out there and, and get that crowd. Always a good thing. So anyway, so a lot of good stuff going on there. Um and John, kind of looking, you know, the other other thing we're gonna talk, I want to talk about uh, it, the, the the UCF linebacker that's at the Senior Bowl, yeah, Saquon Griffin. Yeah, um, you know, I, I I'd seen stories about this guy, I'd read articles about this guy, and you know, if, if you don't know his story, he was born with. Uh, uh, w- without one hand. Well, ac- actually, Bo. It had to have it taken off. Yeah, when he was four years yes. old, he couldn't take the pain anymore. Yes. And he's banging his hand on, yep. on the on the you know nightstand beside his bed, and he just can't take the pain. And finally, they said the best thing we can do to, to alleviate this pain yep. is to cut take the it hand. Away, yep. So they did, and he's unbelievable yep. in terms of being able to, to play a position yep. where you have well, you to be tackle. able to you battle. Gotta, yeah, yeah. You have to be able to catch. You have to be able to do all those yep. things. And he's overcome it at a, at a yeah. tremendous rate. Yeah, you, you look at the positions. Look at offensive line, defensive line, linebackers. A lot of those jobs are hand-to-hand combat, right. basically. It's hand-to-hand. Mm-hmm. And for this guy to be that level of a of a linebacker, uh, with with overcoming that, says a lot about about what he's about, and he's making some noise up there. In, he really in, did. In, uh, Mobile. They were actually able to move him around. Yep. He's a, an outside linebacker that can stand the up pass and rush the, you know, yeah. rush the passer. He's got a terrific inside move that he beat a lot of the big time college. Yep. Uh, tackles on uh, over three days at the Senior Bowl, but he can also cover because he can run yeah. like a running back and he can run like a slot receiver. Yeah. So he can go down and cover those guys. And I think for whatever team kind of sticks sticks their neck out, and yeah. it's not much because this guy has talent. Yeah. But whoever is going to commit to say I'm going to draft this guy in the third round or the fourth round yeah. or the second round, whatever it is, they're going to get a guy that can cover. They're going to get a guy that gives you 100% effort. They're going to get a guy that's multiple and being able to rush the passer. But I think he's going to be an ace on yeah. special teams. Yeah. His speed, his determination, his his want to find the football yeah. and make a play that's all he's ever done as a collegiate. I had him twice this year. Yeah. There's a, a play where he's running down the seam with a tight end, and he's got his back he, you know, inside the, the, the tight end going down the seam. He goes up. Catches the football like he has two yeah. hands. Catches it with his forearm and his in his right, right hand. Interception going the other way. Yeah. And I was talking with a scout before the game. And he said, "You know, I'm not so sure about how you, how how am I going to go beat my chest yeah. about this guy?" I saw him after the game. I nodded. He nodded back. Yeah. Kind of got yeah. that reassurance yeah. that you know maybe his play uh, kind of overshadowed his yeah. deficiency with. Not having a hand. Yeah. Well, I think the one thing, I think when you look at him, and I've seen him play, I saw him play two or three times this year. And sometimes in small doses, you know, you know, you see a bit of a game here or there. But I know this, when you look at him, he, he's a guy, no matter where he ends up, he's going to make their team But Whatever better. team he ends up, he's going to make that team better. That's right. I can guarantee you that. And whether, like you said, whether it's special teams, whether it's an every down player. And, and smart and a great yep. kid. Got to interview him, sat down with he and the quarterback, McKenzie Milton, yep. for about a half an hour. Those guys, those two, I want to have those two on yeah, my team. Yeah. Because you could tell why the leaders 
and why that team went undefeated and why it went from 0 and 11 yeah. to undefeated just in you know probably 18 to 24 yeah. months because of, of players like that, those two kids. Yeah. Uh, so all, overall, John, when you when you looked at, you had a chance to watch uh, the Senior Bowl. Uh, Guys that jump out at you, guys, yeah. guys that, that you look at and you say, "Hey, this is a guy that's intriguing." And you talk about some of the tight ends that are there and this and that. And uh, but, but what kind of guys jumped out at you? I think for the Dolphins being selfish, yeah. uh, I thought Isaiah Wynn, a guard from Georgia, mm-hmm. was one of those guys that kind of put put his put name his, in the yeah. hat. You know, he's kind of out there. There was another guy, Will Hernandez, not not bad, but I thought Wynn probably yeah. had the best on mm-hmm. the interior lineman. I really loved Hamilton, the wideout. From Penn State, I thought Marcus Davenport, a name that probably not many people Mm -hmm. know because he played at University of Texas San Antonio, defensive end, a stand-up guy, 6'6", 260, 70 pounds, ran around, ran through everybody. So those are guys, but everybody was talking about you know the quarterbacks, whether yep. it's going to be you know Baker Mayfield or whether it's going to be Josh Allen or whether it's going to be uh, the guy from Washington State, uh, Luke Falk. Yep. You know, who, who's going to be a guy that that may be around that the Dolphins, if they don't pick a guy at eleven, mm-hmm. where are they going to get that next guy? Because you're going to need a young guy to come yep. in and push. So you know my eyes were on those two guys, and I thought Baker Mayfield and and uh, you know Allen. Josh Allen played. As expected. Yeah. You know, I, I think Baker may have shown the scouts a little bit more yeah. than they thought they were going to get yeah. because he went under center, did a lot of things that he wasn't accustomed to. But Josh Allen has a big time harm, yeah. and you, you feel like you could cut off the rough edges and yeah. make him a guy that could be a starter. Yeah. And you look at, in the, you know, Baker Mayfield, he, he's, he's, he, he's fighting height a little bit. Yes. Six foot. And, and he's fighting Johnny Manziel, right? You, you know, he's 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 now and and he's doing everything he can to to steer away from. Hey, wait a minute! I'm not I'm, I'm not, not that, that guy. guy. I've had my I've had my dust ups along the way, but I'm not that guy. I love to play football. I want to play football. I want to be better. And so it's it's pretty interesting how a guy like that, the shadow of Johnny Manziel, can kind of creep over this guy to the point where he's got to answer about it. You're right. He's got to answer. And and I can guarantee you every. Every team that he sat down with or spoke to or will speak to between now and the draft, that's going to come up. Your character and, and, and what's happened to you off the field already. And are we going to have to worry about this every night when I go home and leave this office as a head coach? Am I going to have to worry about getting a call somewhere that you're out wherever getting in trouble and, and this and that? It, it's one of those things that, that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. If you're a GM, and it, they always talk about coach killers. Well, this is, this is an organizational yep. killer. If you get the wrong guy at quarterback, yep. it sets you back probably two years. Yep. You know, not only the year you drafted him, but now you got to catch up because you were counting on this guy to get through his rookie contract and be your franchise quarterback. Yep. So you're hoping, uh, and Baker Mayfield's done an excellent job when you hear him talk, when you yes. hear him. You know, when you watch him play, people are saying, well, he's too emotional. He's too, you know, get some off-field trouble. Yeah, I, I think he squashed a lot of that, mm-hmm. and I'm sure he had, he probably had 20 individual meetings while yep. he was there and probably scheduled for 20 more yeah, in the February combine, yeah. at the Combine up in Indy. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, let's get some of these questions. Facebook, Anthony Shake Felicio. Hey, Bo, did you think, uh, did you, think you would be a first-round draft pick? You know what? I, the only I, – I look – the first time I ever saw, the uh, first time I ever had a scout talk to me was between my, during, I started getting time during my uh, uh, spring training going into my senior year. Right. So my junior year, I didn't talk to any scout, nothing, nothing. And then, then going into, uh, so I, I, so after practices during, during spring training, there'd be some scouts or, hey, they want you to run a 40. And that's really all you did, run a right. 40 for so I, yeah, I did that, and I go, geez, I, and then, and then I, I remember. <laughs> well, it was so thorough. It was so thorough when we were going to, yeah. to college. You know, can you breathe? Yeah, you physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay. about it. Yeah, you run a forty, you made it. Okay, yeah, you write yeah. it down. <clears throat> so, I tell you when I, I tell you when I first had any indication that I'd be a, a, a high pick in the draft. Um, I was, I was, I was living in an apartment, managing an apartment building because you got free rent if you manage the building, which just <laughs> meant, you know, take care of everyone's yeah. problems and stuff. Just put your name so on So me and a ledger. buddy of mine did that. And so so I get a guy come knocks on my door one day, and uh, 
and said, hey, yeah, yeah, Kimbo Camper, yeah, he was, uh, yeah, my name's so-and-so. And he was, he goes, he, he was with like some scouting agent. Or, no, 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 some agency, a, an okay. agent. Okay. He was an agent. With an agent. With an agency firm, gotcha. right, a group, you know, with these agent groups. And he said, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so, I'm with these guys, and, you know, we're interested in talking to you, and uh, you would you like to go out to dinner or whatever. And I go, what do you talk? What do you want from me? Right. He goes, no, we think you're going to be a pretty high draft pick. I go, what? I go, I think you got the right guy. I go, you know, I think you want Wilson Falmina, you know? He's going to be a first-round pick or Louie Wright, not me. And they go, nah. And so, <clears throat> so I hate to say it, but this is kind of, you know, you know, I go into college. By that time, I was, my, I was going into my fourth year of college. Uh, I remember writing checks for a dollar, mm-hmm. you know, because you had very much, very little money right. to, to live on. And he was going to take me to dinner. I said, yeah, I'll go to dinner um, with yeah, you. I'm in, I'm in. So the guy used to come over to my, like, like every other week he would come to my apartment. It was like he'd come on a Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, boom, 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 there's a knock on my door. So, and, and I shouldn't have done it. It wasn't, it wasn't legal, but it was a wild no, west back then. Everybody did it. You know, it was everyone's doing it. So every time the guy would come, he'd go, where do you want to go? And I'd always pick, you know, like one of the best restaurants in town. So after a couple of times, I realized he's coming. He says, I'll see you. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. I go, okay. So I called a couple of my buddies. I said, come by my house Wednesday, you know, be there about five o'clock and hang out a little bit. So the guy would come. He'd go, hey, hey, Kim, you, you guys want to go to dinner? I go, well, I can't. I got, I got a couple of my buddies. And I don't, he goes, ah, eh, bring them along. <laughs> <laughs> Those were always great. Those so I had, were so I had bring-alongs. I had guys who'd come and they'd come over and be in the house. And he'd bring them to dinner. So then, then I got drafted. I got drafted. Get the call from the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Get drafted. You know, first round, nineteenth right. player pick, and talk to Don Shule and everything. Five minutes later, I get a call from the guy. Hey, Bo, you know, come on, man. We we need to get out. We need to give you. I go. What do you mean? He goes. Well, you know, we need to start thinking about your contract. I go. No, don't worry about that. I hired somebody else. <laughs> he goes. What? He goes. I've been with you for a year, for over a year. I go. Hey, I never told you. I never. Right. I never told you yes or no. I just, you know, my table bo- my boys are interested. So I went from being I went from being a very good player in his eyes to, to being a dirty, rotten yeah, piece of worst. crap. You, you were piece the worst. of this. You piece of that. Yeah. You were the worst. <laughs> I got some good meals out of it, though. You know so anyway, yeah, that's kind of my, you know. I know this. I went from, back at the time, Sporting News. You remember the old Sporting yeah. News? Sporting News was like the detailed, it's a whole newspaper full of nothing but sports. Right. Mainly baseball. Um, but they had listed like t- one to a hundred uh, players at each position. And I remember my, going into my senior year, I was like 89th. I was the 89th defensive end on the chart. And when they came out with it before the draft, I was number two behind Leroy Selman. That's a, that's uh, from a pretty my, good from my, leap. It was a pretty good that's leap. A pretty yeah, good my, leap. My, yeah, from my <laughs> junior, my senior year. Uh, so all anyway, because anyway. of that forty. All because of that. Well, and then I had my my coach. You know, come on, I'll, you you get it to finish. I'll get him out to start. And he goes, you know, put your feet on the line, not your hand. So there's sometimes <laughs> I ran forty nine and a half yards. You need, you, know? you need that. I needed that you needed support. That. Yeah. Thirty eight yard forty. <laughs> um. Bo and John from Brent Stratton, uh, Stratton and Facebook. Bo and John, who do you like at tight end in this year's draft? Well, I, I think that's part of the process now. It is. is there's a number of guys out there. Uh, there was a kid that everyone's talking about from South Carolina or South Dakota State. He got hurt. He got hurt, so he's yeah. not playing at the Senior Bowl. So he kind of knocks him a notch back. But you know, he seems to have like the prototypical size and everything. He does. But again, playing at a different level of, of, of uh, uh, you know playmakers that you deal with. Um, well, Gesicki from Penn State, he, yeah. he's probably one of Fuma Galli from Fuma Galli, uh, yeah. you know, Wisconsin yeah. did a pretty good job. Yeah. I was surprised uh, Smythe from Notre Dame, who uh-huh. wasn't really a pass catcher because Notre Dame used him as a down guy, blocking a lot, yeah. kind of reminded me of Anthony Fasano a little yeah. bit. Because when he got in some red zone work yesterday at yeah. the Senior Bowl, caught everything, yeah. had separation, looked like he did it all his life. Yeah. But Notre Dame really never asked him to do those things. Yeah. So there's a bunch of – there's a it's a good crop of tight ends. Yeah. If the Dolphins are you know interested in doing that, in yeah. drafting a tight end and not looking at free agency, there's a couple of guys. So I, I, I heard mixed reviews. Early on, I was talking to someone. They said, well, you know, the, the tight end crop, not, not, not what it's been. Right. Uh, which led me to believe it wasn't going to be very good. And then lately I've been hearing more and more people talking. No, no, no. There's some, there's some pretty good tight ends out there. It, it all depends on your goggles. You know, yeah. if you're in that business of what yeah. you're looking for, yeah. I think that there's a flavor of tight end. There's the big guy that is a really good interior guy that's yeah. questionable getting out. But then there's a lot of tight ends 
that have been in a system where they're not attached to the line of scrimmage. Right. They're standing up in the mm-hmm. slot and they're motioning across the formation. There's a bunch of those yeah. guys. That See, are John, there. John, to me, there there are two types of tight ends in mm-hmm. this league now. Right. You know, there's the guy that I don't, I don't care if he can block or not. I just want him to run Catch routes. passes. Give me a mismatch. Yes. Give me especially look, in the red zone. And where we can put, you know, if we need to kick you out as, as an outside guy you. or whatever, we can, run a slant. we can move you around. And right. then there's a the guy that's the typical, that's the old prototypical tight that's end. That's going to play the for guy the that Titans. Can, can block. Yeah. You know? He's going he's gonna to line up tight. He's going to block for you. He's going to be able to catch some passes for right. you. But he's going to have to be multi talented. He's going to have to right. be able to do those two things. My mind right now for the Dolphins, I don't care if the guy can block. Give me the guy that can run down the seam, make big plays, create a mismatch in the red zone, and, and give give defenders the same problems covering our tight ends <laughs> that we've had us. covering their tight that's ends. That's right. That's you know? right. Create that problem yep. uh, that it seems like in space. And that's what teams do. It, it feels like when they play the Miami Dolphins, it's like an accordion. They spread you out, then they bring you back in. Then they spread you out, and they wait yep. for them. Uh, we got so-and-so on so-and-so. Let's take advantage. Yep. And there's a lot of space to throw the football if you're a quarterback doing that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I agree with you. There's there's more movement guys I think coming out now yeah. than guys that are attached to the line of scrimmage. Well, the, the position has become over the decades. It's it's be, much more than when I played. You know, the, they're always pass catching guys, but usually they were third down. Right. You know, possession guys. Right. G- you know, give me. We need eight yards. Get nine, and we'll hit you across right. the middle or something like that. N- now these guys, to me, they're 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 a hybrid tight end wide receiver guys that really have become big, big impact guys in the National Football League. Right. Well, they give them a different letter now. You know, it used to be X, Y, yeah. and Z. Yeah. You know, the, the Y would be the tight yeah. end. They call them different letters for yeah. different systems. But there's specifically a move tight end yeah. that is going to catch a lot of passes yeah. and have a lot of opportunities in the red zone. Yeah, that, that's where I'd like to see us uh, kind of get that way. Uh, El Chapo Jr., hey, guys, why is the Senior Bowl always in Mobile, Alabama, well, I think because Mobile puts it on. I, and I think nobody can get in trouble. In yeah, Mobile, yeah, it's hard Alabama. to get yeah, hard to get in trouble in Mobile. No yeah, doubt I've about that. I tried every year. I tried. I, I can't. I tried when I was there, and it didn't it didn't work out <laughs> very well for me. But, um, but it, yeah, it's always been in Mobile. It's always been at Lad Peebles Stadium. Right. I played there in 1976. Was it 75? Was the year I played, mm-hmm. and it was there. And you know what? It had been there a number of years yes. before that, too. So I, know. I don't know how many years it's been in Mobile. Long time. But, but it has been, and it's always in that same spot. And yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to get lost. It, it is. It is. Just well. go to the middle of town. And Logan and I tried that a few years, <laughs> but we managed, to, we managed to find our way around. Uh, Christopher Dunkley on Facebook. Bo, what are your thoughts on franchising Jarvis? What's the inside word on how he would respond? I don't think guys don't <clears> respond well to being franchised. I, I don't think they want to. They don't want to be forced into something. Although it's a lo- look, big, I, it's a big I'm, number. It's a big number. You know, for me, I'm hoping I, I get franchised. From the this outside year. looking in, I've always been well. Hell, franchise me every year if you want. That's what because the I'm going to get paid. Because I'm going to get paid the top three. Yeah. But the average of the top three, I believe it's the top three players at that given position. You're going to get the average salary of those top three guys. What you give up, you give up the comfort of having a contract the next year in the event you get hurt. I, but there's yeah. insurance. There's, a, there's other ways think, to... I don't think there's any... I would rather be franchised. I would too. Let Pay me now and don't worry about yeah. two years. Somebody else is going to pay me. Yeah. If I do my job right, yeah. either you're going to re-sign me yeah. and take me off of the tag or somebody else yeah. is going to so, do so, the same So thing. Jarvis is probably... And I, got the, and I got paid for one or two years. Right. The highest yep. top three of any, any so, salary. So Jarvis is, is... Jarvis is... And look... And this is all speculation, but I think Jarvis is in a the 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 swing he's in right now is between ten million and fifteen million. I think that's kind of the swing that he's in right now. You franchise Jarvis, he gets seventeen million dollars next year. That's right. And I'm thinking, well, so let me see if I'm gonna if I'm between ten and four. Let, let's say okay, you know what? I think the team kind of knows where he's so, gonna. The team's gonna knows where he end. Jarvis knows where he's gonna enter so his let me, agent. Let me overpay so, three so million dollars. So let me dollars. see. So you can you're gonna you're. I think he's going to end up about thirteen million dollars. That's just my guess. So thirteen million dollars if if I get a contract, seventeen million if they franchise, if they franchise me, four million. I'll take my chance. I chances getting franchised. Yeah, I've already I've already caught the most footballs in right. four years than anybody in NFL yeah. history. So go ahead and franchise me. Yeah. If, I, if I'm him and I'm the agent, because quite frankly, if you franchise me and I make seventeen instead of fourteen, 
or I'm, thirteen. I'm for that. You know, you finally can, you, beating the system. Yeah, you you can pay me. You can you can pay me nine the next year. I'm still ahead of the game. And if I'm the team, why would I ever do that? Yeah, yeah. I, I you know so yeah. I, I I don't know how they were. You know, it it just seems like to me guys respond poorly to being franchised because well, they, they want that long term deal. Soon. But yeah, I like believe me. I'm I'm. You could. I wish. I wish you want to see, the, see how poor I yeah. act. Franchise me. You. What's the other one? What's the? Well, there's uh, a note. What's transition or what's yeah. the other one? Where it's, I'll take any tag. Yeah, any, point, tag yeah, any tag. Any <laughs> tag. <laughs> you know, I'm getting. I'm getting two dollars and fifty cents a show here. Oh, I didn't I've been know trying to get. Paid so I've been much. trying to get franchised. <laughs> I've been trying to get a franchise tag <laughs> for the last six months so I can get to five dollars a show. I want to know what Leon's making. Because he, he's Leon, overtime. Leon just, Leon just informed me that you're taking too much money. They're gonna bump. <laughs> they're gonna bump me down to two dollars. <laughs> bump me down to two dollars a show. So. I knew he was whispering something back there. <laughs> hey guys, what do you think about uh, Quentin Nelson, the guard from Notre Dame? Is Quentin Nelson the guy that's the the top guy in everyone's there, or is he the? Because they, they got one of their guards is like off the charts. Yeah, right? I, it might be him. Yeah, I, I to be honest with you, I've watched Notre Dame play yeah. uh, a handful of times this yeah. year. Primarily a running football yep. team. I saw him against Miami get stoned. Yep. Uh, but, I, but, but, I, is, but I watched him a couple but times. I watched him against North Carolina yeah. where they rolled over people yep. in the second half. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other game I watched them where they ran the yep. football effectively. Yep. Well, it's because they had a running quarterback and they had a good running yeah. back and they had a big, big offensive line. I'd have to go watch uh, Quentin yep. Nelson specifically to to say whether I yep. liked him or not. Yeah, because so, some of these guys, like he's like you said, you know, typically for us, you travel on a Saturday, get into a hotel. Get in a hotel four four thirty. Put on the game, and you're getting the second half of a game. You're getting or highlights a little bit here and there. So it's it's right. hard to to kind of sit there. And, and, f- and for me, Bo, to be honest with you, I'm leaving on a Friday. I've got the two teams that I'm covering for Saturday for college yeah. football, and and then I'm watching tape during the week on the two teams I have. So I'm, you know, kind of getting that uh, that view with blinders on. Yeah, I'm just kind of focused on the game that I'm doing, and you're kind of perusing. When you're in the plane or you're right. at an airport watching games, D. Howard writes. So, what what good is wide receiver without an offensive line? That's a philosophical thing out there, because look, there are guys that I had this I had this conversation with someone you know, the, the other day. Said, you know, just uh, I just don't want him to draft a. Don't. I was having this conversation with Higgy, okay. Mike, Mark Higgs. Yeah. He said, well, I just don't want him to draft a guard in the first round. I go, why not? I go, I do. I go, well, why would you draft a guard? You can get him. You can get him later. And I said, we haven't John, been able to get We've anybody. been trying for a decade and a half. <clears throat> To find guards, we tried and the draft, second round, We've third tried round, free agency. free agency, you name it. We've tried, and so you know. Look, my thing is, if you got a guy there that you think can be a guard for the you guy for the next ten years, grab him we've and been, stick him in there. We've now. been unlucky in yeah. terms of finding easily replaceable parts, and I, I yeah. think it is because at the guard, uh, yeah. you got to really be unfortunate, yeah. not to find a guy within a five year window. Yeah. And, and we've been and, very unfortunate. We've been very unfortunate, and. I think that there's plenty out there that, you know, if it's the right guy, I don't yeah. care if we draft him there. Yeah. But I'd, I'd rather get a guy uh, that I feel confident about that's going to put points on the board in some capacity. Yeah. Now, you can do that at guard because look, you, can look, protect, I'm gonna tell you, this. you can protect the quarterback yeah. and be able to get where in, you need to be. In my mind, if it's a guard, he better be a big, mean SOB that's got snot coming out of his nose when he puts his hand in the ground and that you can put there tomorrow yeah. and he's going to be your, and he's going to be your starter for the next 8 or 10 years without question and without a without a hiccup and i don't think it's got to be that guy if it's going to be a guard and i don't care who you are and what yep. franchise you are it's hard to pick that guy yeah sometimes you luck into it look at the new england patriots they've got guys of free yep. agents undrafted yep. guys they're all playing 4 or 5 years for yep. them on the offensive yep. line I can name one, Solder. Solder, and that's and it. That's the other it. ones are really all guys. exchangeable pieces right. along the way. And he's not afraid to change them up. Yep. And it works out for them because they've got one of the best that's ever played. Yep. Throwing Stand the football. behind them. They've got some pretty good guys on the other side, too. Yep. Uh, Maurice Jones from Facebook. Hey, Bo, can we make Josh Allen the backup quarterback for about two years and start him? Well, I don't know about us, but but I would think that's got to be the thought process if you're gonna take for him. anybody in this league that takes Josh Allen I do. as a quarterback because he's got to overcome he's got to overcome the lack of competition that he played against. There's a learning and, curve and get himself up to the level of competition. Yeah. Not to mention terminology, uh, defenses in the NFL, yes. all those types of things. Um, when Carson Wentz, they put him in midway through his rookie year. They went there an injury or something. That, that got him I playing, think so. I and, think and then so. he kind of went through. But yeah. but I think even Carson Wentz, I think most of the thought on Carson Wentz 
was here's a guy you know you need to, you need to get let him sit there for a well, year. Or he two wasn't. And then... I mean, he impressed at the senior yeah. bowl. He he was impressive. Yes. but it wasn't like this guy is a can't miss. Right. I, right. I, I didn't I didn't feel that walking yeah. away and talking with scouts that were there, yeah. talking with head coaches, talking with assistant coaches. Yeah. I, I got a feeling that they liked him. Yeah. But I, I had a but feeling. I, but I, I think along with the Josh, Josh Allen, Allen's in that you, same you, boat. I think most of the people that looked at Carson Wentz. And probably Philadelphia also yeah. believe that hey, here's a guy we got to come in, we've got to bring him along. And, but then he's one of those guys where you come in and you go, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. This guy's pretty good. And you get and, a head coach and that you played ex- the position, right, that, to that help him out, to help him out. And it accelerated his his, his time there. Yeah. I'm not saying that Josh Allen's going to follow that same path, but I do think he's a guy that you you that if you're drafting Josh Allen to start today, next to year, start next year, no. wrong. That that's a wrong move. Gotcha. Uh, unless hey, who knows. The guy may be the next But it could be five coming. games in where he gets his opportunity yeah. and, and takes off. And then lights up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, last one here. Uh, John Beal's Facebook. Do you think we can come up with another Zach Thomas in this year's draft? You know, draft, you know the one thing we, we keep forgetting is we've got Raekwon McMillan coming back. Mm, that's right. You know, here was a guy you drafted in the second round, and he was going to be the starter. He was going to be your Mike linebacker. Uh, no question about it going in. So you got Kim coming back. I kind of I always look at those guys who, who got drafted last year, didn't play. I count them on this year's draft. Yeah. Is, hey, there, there's, a, there's another draft pick for us. Well, we got an extra Right one. there coming. And, you got an extra one with him. So, and an early pick. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, can he be another Zach Thomas? I don't know. Um, but look, you, you go to, and I'm not saying he's a, 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 a Zach Thomas or ever, is ever going to be. Zach Thomas, but you look at this year's, this last year's draft, who, who came with some players that, you know, that, that made an impact. But then you also got, you, you also got um, Chase Allen, mm-hmm. who came in and played well for you in a, in a tough situation, who wasn't a draft choice. And you got um, the offensive lineman, uh, Jesse. Jesse Jesse Davis, Davis. Uh, another undrafted free agent who came in and played, and is going to be. For, for all intents and purposes, I would He's expect be a him, starter. I, I expect him to be a starter I do too. next year, and Chase Allen competing in that spot. So you've got some guys in last year's draft that were you know weren't expected, to, some weren't even expected to make the team, right? End up playing, they played play significant along, snaps, and, play, and, and played pretty well for you. They did. Along they did the a way. good job. So, yeah. I would say, Bo, that you're getting you're you're trying to catch up in draft classes yeah. where you missed, yeah. And the Dolphins were unfortunate; they missed. On the offensive line, yep. that's the spot where they need to catch up. So you get yep. one with Jesse, yep. you know, and, and he's going to be a guard or a tackle yep. on the right side, and you hope you can find somebody else in the draft yep. that steps in as a starter. All right, that's going to do it for the show today. Uh, Joe Rose, apologize for not uh, hope you feel sticking better, around. Joe. Joe will feel better. Joe, Joe don't stay, doesn't stay sick for so long, too long. Nope. I know that. John Kajemi, always a pleasure, John. Have a great weekend. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. We'll find out. Look what. Kind of keep talking about these guys and what's going on. We'll make fun of Leon a little more. Trey may be back here, and we can talk oh, we about can Trey's love life a little bit. He's been on about, the road. Talk about Logan. There's ru- rumor is that Logan, now that he's got his hair cut and beard trim, may go out and try to find some clothes that don't have a Dolphin logo on them <laughs> to wear when he goes out. So, but It's that, only a rumor. But that's just a rumor. It's only a rumor. Just a rumor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll keep you up to date. We'll keep you up to date when we come back next week. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. We'll see you on Monday. Take care, everybody.